everybody. Welcome to our Sunday service. We're about to get started in about two minutes. Thank you for joining on with us. Be sure to like, share, and comment as we share the word. We are excited about a great word. Good morning, Brother Chris. Thank you for joining on with hey, us. Hey, Heath, how you doing? How you feeling after our last few days of, of labor? Yeah, it's, it's been it's been an eventful week for the deacons and um, the run at the church. They've been at the church painting and just getting some stuff organized at the church. And so they're a little bit sore from all of the work and all the labor that they put in. But it's really a labor of love, and we appreciate you guys for doing that for us. We are excited to get back into the church when we do. We are planning a grand homecoming celebration for um, sometimes late, sometime late in, yeah, sometime late in June or or July. We're, we're looking. Yeah. We're looking. We're praying. Yes, yes, we are. But be on the lookout for announcements about that. We are so ready to get back into the house of the Lord. But when we do, it will be a homecoming celebration. So be on the lookout for the dates and um, all of the good things that we're going to be planning for that. Good morning, uh, Deacon Payne. Deacon Thank you Payne. for joining on with us. Good to see you, man. Deacon Payne. Hope all is well for yes. you. Started shortly. Go we, ahead and comment and share. Yes. Deacon Payne, Deacon Chris, y'all share, share, share. Please share. Get other folks tuned in with us. Yeah. As we get started here in just a minute, I'm trying to get mine shared now. Yeah. You got it. So it's about one minute till. We'll go ahead and uh, start with a few announcements. Again, we thank our deacons and the pastor for going out to the church on yesterday to do some renovations and get some things straight in the Lord's house. That's so important to make sure you're showing love and you're showing it through action when it comes to God and when it comes to um, his home so that we can, that is our home. And so we have to take care of it. And we thank our deacons and the pastor for doing so. We will continue to do our um, fellowshipping online and our parking praises periodically. We're excited um, to possibly be doing a parking praise on the third Sunday this month for Father's Day. We want to do something special for our fathers. So come out for our parking praise on the third Sunday if the weather allows for it. So we will be on the lookout for that. But we want to make sure our fathers feel special on that um, Sunday, so be on the lookout for that as well. You can also visit our website. On our website, we have so many um, different resources for you to be able to go on there, um, look at some of the things that we've done throughout this entire time, um, throughout the entire span of the shelter in place and the COVID, throughout the time that we have not been able to get back into the house of the Lord, back into St. Joseph. So um, you can go on there and look at that. We have Sunday school lessons. We have our midweek worships. We have our Sunday worships. We have, um, what else do we have? Prayer calls, all of our prayer calls on there. So you can go back on that website and look at those um, videos just to be encouraged or to go back and um, re-look at something that resonated with you. And our Sunday school lessons are also in there. We put a lot of time in those Sunday school lessons, and they are so timely. They have been, like, hitting the nail on the head with the Sunday school lessons, just continuing to talk about justice and things like that. And now we're in uh, a new series for Sunday school, so be sure to tune in on Tuesday for our Tune In Tuesday when we will be sharing the Sunday school lessons. We're also looking, actively looking for a musician. So if you um, know anybody that's a minister of music um, and are interested in um, being a part of our ministry, please reach out to us. Do you have a little bit more to say on that about the application and um, things like that? Yeah, please. Anybody spread the word. Let, let musicians, talented uh, folks you know who uh, know how to play keyboard, piano, organ, to reach out to us. Uh, we, we're willing to work with them. We understand that 
uh, demand this high for musicians, but we're ready. We're ready to take that next leap in our worship experience, and we're praying that God will send us someone who will elevate our experience. Right. Good morning, Sister Sheena. Yeah, How y'all doing? Morning, Sister Sheena. Miss you and the girls. Yeah. Miss How are the you. girls doing? We hope they're doing fine. Be sure to give them my number. I see them on like social media every once in a while, but give them my info. Let's tell them to check in and let me know how they're doing. All right, you ready to go ahead? Yep, okay. We're going to go ahead and get started. I am Patience Tally. I'm here with Pastor Tally and our little Jimmy Tally, who's over here acting like a little teenager in her phone. We are um, here in honor of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. We are a church that is Bible-based. Christ centered, family focused, and mission minded. For all the promises of God in Him are yeah, which is why we believe when Jesus says yes, nobody no, can say no. That's right. She still knows it, even though she's in her phone. Um, we believe that with our whole heart, and we thank you guys. We thank you guys for joining on with us um, three times a week, four times including our Sunday school, and just just being a part of this ministry. We could not do this without you, and we're just so appreciative of you. And we we hope and pray that you're you're really receiving something from this ministry. We are doing this um, first and foremost to glorify God, but also to help you with your ministry and help you with your relationship with Christ. And so. So um, please comment, like, share um, if you if you're on here, and for those on our prayer call, tell people about um, what's going on at St. Joseph so that they can so that we can recruit them uh, per se to Christ and recruit them to our ministry so that we can just continue to grow. Um, good morning, Sister Robin and Sister Angel. Thank y'all for Sister joining Val. us. Sister Val from Folsom. Okay, yeah. Yes, hey, Sister indeed. Val. Thank you for joining on. Um, again, we are just so grateful for you guys. Well, thank you. We appreciate that, Sister Val. She said good morning. Uh, all of them joined you in this yes, evening. Indeed. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. Tell Sister Lucy, say hello and send our love to y'all family. Yes, yes. But again, we are hey, here Hey, how you doing? Bible-based, christ and family-focused, and mission-minded for all the promises of God and Him are you. Which is why we believe when Jesus says yes, nobody, nobody can, can say, say no. no. That's right. Um, if you are interested in worshiping with us through giving, you can visit our website. We have three platforms of giving. You can use the Cash App. We also have Givelify, or you can simply mail in um, a payment. Again, I just like for our pastor to um, just let you guys know the importance of tithing and what that means. Amen, amen. And that's St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. We believe in tithing, not just with your token, but with your time and your talent. That's right. Whatever it is that you can give to the Lord, give so wholeheartedly. Do not rob God of what he's blessed yeah. you with, whether it's financially, whether it's with your, uh, obviously with your treasure, but your yeah. time, your talent, whatever it is that you can give to build the kingdom of God, yeah. it is essential, yes, it, it is, is needed. Yes, and St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, we've been truly blessed because of you all yeah. who have continued to commit uh, to that call to give, that, that call to worship through giving. And so yes. I just thank St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, even non-members, those of you out in the community, yeah. near and far, we thank you for sowing a seed into our ministry. It allows right. us to continue extending the invitation to Christian fellowship through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we truly thank you. Uh, and we encourage you to continue doing yes. what you're doing, being yes. faithful to God, being faithful to the giving. Yes, and the giving is important because that's how we're able to give back to our community. First, give to God and give back to our community. We've done so much um, since this time of quarantine. We've given back. Um, we've given back to the community in ways of feeding um, healthcare workers. We fed um, community workers in West Monroe. We've given to um, some of the nurses that have been continuing to do things. We given to our members through um, feeding them and going public, to city public yeah, transportation. The city public mm -hmm. transportation, feeding our members, going mm -hmm. to give them tokens of love like flowers. So we are really um, doing the will of God when it comes to um, the things that you guys have been um, helping with through your tithes and offering. And so we just encourage you to keep that going so that we can keep yes, this ministry Lord. going. Yes, and so Lord. we just thank you guys. We can't thank you enough um, for everything that you have done. Um, again, we're just going to go through a few more announcements. We are actively looking for a musician, so if you know any musicians, please let us know. And we are 
thanking our pastor and the deacons for working in the church on yesterday. They've been just yesterday. I know. For <laughs> We've been out there the last several weekends, yeah. and then the last few days, you were out there Thursday night to 10 p.m. Yeah. We were out there all day yesterday. I mean, Friday afternoon yeah. from about 2 to 6 or so. Then yesterday, we were out there from about 8 to 12. Yeah. And so we just thank God that we can serve and that we have right. men, we have servants uh, in our leadership at right. St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. And if you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a part of a family-focused yes. environment that truly believes in building God's kingdom, taking care of God's house, and taking care of, God, taking care of God's people, we invite you to St. Joseph yes. Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you that you're tuning in online. But when we open up our doors, come in, take a sneak peek. Yes. Come in and see the work that we're doing yeah. uh, in our facilities. That's and, of right. course, you will recognize the work that we're doing in our community. Yes, so um, I went and teach some of it out on yesterday, and I was talking to the men, and I was like, okay, this is why my husband has been gone several evenings um, during the week, but God is good, and we're just so grateful, and I'm just grateful that our pastor has a vision to um, grow the church, not just in the people, but in the church in the building. Um, we just thank you for that vision, and we thank you yeah. for your faithfulness in hearing God and um, doing what he calls you to do. So we're going to go right into worship. We've gone over a few announcements. If you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, but we're going to go into song again. I'm just going to tell you about how this song came about. Um, so I've, sang, I've sung it before, um, but every time I go to like prepare for anything, I go and I make sure I look at the lyrics and the lyrics resonate with me. And I went for these lyrics and it was the safest place in the whole wide world. And so when I looked at you look googled it and was like safest place in the whole art world lyrics on google it brought up places like new zealand and australia and canada and i'm looking at this like is this really are these really the safest places in the whole wide world or when what do you think the safest place to you in the whole wide world is it you know what where do you see that at home in the presence of your own home or in the arms of your spouse or holding on to your loved ones where where do you see as the safest place in the whole wide world but the more that i've thought about it i'm thinking okay but what what about when we're not in those places what about when god sends us out into the world and we get disappointed and he sends us into prison and he sends us to the valley low what then how can we get to that safe place and that will truly be in the will of God. If you know that God has sent me here, that God has put me in this place, you will know that this is my safe place. And the thing about God is you can take him anywhere. His safe place can be anywhere, no matter where you are. If you are somewhere you do not want to be, if you're stuck in the midst of protesting and things have gone bad, you can call on God because as long as you are with him, you are in a safe place. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. The trials may be great and the way Dangerous. 
different. John chapter 6, and we'll pick up at verse 25. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and we'll start at verse 25. Yes, John. We'll conclude at verse 27. Again, we greet you in the name of Jesus, and I greet peace to you, grace and peace to you, to my pastor, Charles R. Brown, Sr., of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I do wish him a very special yeah. and happy eighth year pastoral anniversary Thank to you, Lord. Lady Brown, Chelsea, and CJ, that family ministry. Yeah. And that's when you see Patience and I and Demi, we, we look like our spiritual parents. Yeah. If you look at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Donaldsonville, you will see Reverend Charles R. Brown Sr., yeah. his wife and his children are laboring and serving worshiping together in that ministry. Amen. So they celebrate eight years Glory of God. pastoralship at Emmanuel Baptist Church. We do uh, thank you for mentoring and sowing into our lives, being an unsample, as Paul would call you, according to the gospel of God. And so we thank you, we love you, and we will have a package in the mail for you this week. Amen. Yes. To show our love. We can say our love, but we want to show you yes. our love we as you, well. God. We pray that you all had a great time. We were able to tune in for a little while this morning on your online worship. So, amen again. 
honoring my pastor Charles O. Brown Sr., eighth year pastoral anniversary. Mm -hmm. anniversary. John chapter 6, verse number 25. John chapter 6, verse number 25. When they found him, I'm reading the international version. When they found him on the other side of the lake, mm -hmm. they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Yeah. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Thank you, Jesus. That's John chapter 6, verses 25 through 27. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. We're going to come from the subject this morning. Are you in it? For the right reason. Amen. Are you in it? For the right reason. We as a people like to say, well, God knows my heart. And yes, he certainly does. But my question is, is the heart that you're showing God pleasing to God? Is the heart that God sees pleasing? Does your heart please God? Yes, God knows your heart, but is it pleasing to God? What is your heart showing God? Why? Are you on this journey? Are you in it for the right reason? As we look around on the news and social media, we see a lot of commentary and communication on police brutality and racial injustice. And of course, in the destruction, in the divide, questions are coming out about who's doing it and why are they doing it? Are they doing it for the right reason? Are they protesting just to provoke a riot so that they can destroy and divide the community. Even folks who are jumping out there on the front lines, we're starting to wonder now, are they doing it to push their own agenda? Are they doing it to push their own social exposure? Are they doing it for their own political gain and power? We wonder who's in it for the right reason. And it's no different what's going on here in our text where Jesus challenges his followers on their desires and dedication toward the journey. Let's look at the background so that you can get a full understanding of what's going on here. Jesus, here John chapter 6, in this area of John, the book of John, Jesus is now at his absolute best in terms of people finding him and people following him. Chapter 5, Jesus heals the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. And if you remember that story, the lame man got up, but not only did he get up, but he got up and he told some folks about Jesus. He goes on, Jesus, now in, in John chapter 5, to explain now, and now that he's got a crowd, he's got folks inquiring who he is. He explains his connection, his relationship, his kinship to the Father, which is God. And then chapter 6 rolls in, and now that he's got some folks finding him, he has some folks following him, he rolls in here in chapter 6, and now he feeds them. He feeds the multitude. But before he feeds the multitude, John chapter 6, verse number 2, put something in there very profound that many of us, as we're reading the Bible, that many of us, as we're studying the Bible, many of us, as we're preaching his word, we will overlook and miss probably even this, this small scripture here, chapter six, uh, chapter 6, verse number 2, it says that Jesus, at, before he fed the multitude, the Bible tells us, chapter 6, verse 2, that a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them which were deceased. Ask somebody, ask yourself, why are you following Jesus? John chapter 6, verse number 2, it tells us that they were following Jesus because they saw miracles. So are you following Jesus for the right reason? Also here in John 6, we find Jesus walking on water toward the ship the disciples were in during a storm. These disciples and the multitudes of folks who continue to sojourn and follow Jesus and go in the places where Jesus where, where was headed, uh, they have found Jesus, they followed Jesus, and they had already been receiving favor from Jesus. But as we get to the text today, Jesus is still curious to know, are you in it for the right reason? And so God says, he's asking this question today, 
to the church of 2020, this first Sunday in June 2020, God says, I'm asking this question in the midst of the crisis on the land that we call COVID-19. God says, I'm asking this question uh, in the midst of civil unrest in our communities because I'm beginning to see a satisfied people. Not only that, but I'm seeing a satisfied people who won't be sustained until they get what truly has been sealed. Let's look at what God is seeing as a satisfied people. Look at verse 25. When they found him, talking about the disciples and those followers of Jesus, when they found him, found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they are asking him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Verse 26, Jesus answers, Very, I, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your field. If we look back at the geographic and the timing of these disciples, we can go back here, chapter 6, verse 16, where the disciples start on a journey all by themselves. In the previous verses, verses 14 15, we find out that after Jesus fed the multitude, these same folks who were only there because they were looking for miracles, they were only following Jesus for miracles, after he performed another miracle, he understood it in his spirit that they were looking for him or following him for their own agenda. And Jesus said, wait a minute, let me go be by myself. The Bible tells us, chapter 6, 14, 15, that Jesus goes up into the mountain to be by himself. At this time, the disciples decide, I'm going to go ahead on our own. We're going to continue on our own. Somebody need to comment right now that I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Right now, comment, tell somebody, tell your neighbor, whoever's in the car with you, whoever's in that room with you, tell them that I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Because the disciples, they didn't wait on the Lord. And perhaps, now the Bible then tells us this, this is all tatted, you can charge it to tatted head and it's hard if you want. That's fine, but perhaps now, perhaps because they didn't wait on the Lord, it was part of God's plan to show them that they can't continue on this journey without Jesus. After all, it was in the same time that as they went on by themselves, they jumped in the ship by themselves, they left the shore by themselves, and they didn't have the Savior with them. And instead, they ended up incurring a storm. And so this is when Jesus shows up walking on the water, saying, It is I, be not afraid. You know, somebody, you got to be okay with waiting on the Lord sometimes. Maybe God is getting some things in line for you. Maybe God is rearranging some puzzle pieces in your life. And before he can, com before he can complete the puzzle, you've already stopped playing the game. You've already gone over to Monopoly. Give God time to finish putting the puzzle together before you jump ship and leave the shore. So now we get to our sex. And they know that they left here without Jesus. And so now they're questioning, whoa, 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 Jesus, where'd you get here? How'd you get here? When the truth of the matter is, they never should have been separated from Jesus. Watch me now. Are you in it for the right reasons? Watch me now. And we're looking at what's going on today. The protests, many of which are not being led by people of God. The riots, most of them are not taking place under the leadership of godly folks. Anytime we as a people take off on a journey by ourselves, the storm will soon come. Only a satisfied people will think that they've had enough from the Lord and that they can continue on their own without him on the boat with them. Only a satisfied people will think that I'm tired of peace and now it's time for me to take that into my own hand. Only a satisfied people will allow their frustrations to allow them to incite more fear into the land rather than, rather than more favor from the Lord. Only a satisfied people will think it's okay to not have to wait on the Lord. Many of us see a mess, and we'll understand that we need a miracle, but we will refuse to wait on the Lord for him to make it a true message. And so our text says in verse 26 that Jesus answered, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs I performed, but because you ate loaves and you had your fear. In other words, Jesus says, you didn't come looking for me because you saw God in me. 
Jesus says, you didn't come looking for me. You're not curious to know when I arrived here. You're not curious to know how I got here because you see God in my actions. But you're only asking me this because you know I fed you. You know that I filled your stomachs and I did it for free. Sounds like a satisfied people. Are you in it for the right reason? Many people use religion to gain prestige. Many people use religion to gain comfort, and Lord have mercy, some of us even use it to gain books. I see folks holding up the Bible, never may have touched the Bible in their lives, but because it, it looks good to somebody, because it's going to get somebody's attention somewhere, let me just do this. <laughs> but those are self-centered motives. And true believers, we know how to follow Jesus simply because we know that that's just the way to live. Some of us are okay with following Jesus, whether he gives us two fish and five loaves of bread or not. Some of us are okay with following Jesus, whether he will restore our marriage or not. Some of us are okay with following Jesus, whether we ain't got enough money to pay the white of this money or not. Some of us are just going to follow Jesus in spite of the circumstance, in spite of what's going on around us, some of us just have an appetite to follow Jesus. But literally here in the text, they just wanted the bread. Literally here in the text, they just wanted to put Jesus on display as their now new powerful king to lead them against their Roman oppressors. And so God is asking us the question today, are we in it for the right reason? Are we challenging police brutality for the right reason? Are we challenging racism for the right reason? Or are we only doing it until we get the social media likes that we've always desired? Or are we only doing it until we get our first news interview? God says, don't be a satisfied people because those things will not sustain you on this journey. Let's look at it. Verse 27, we're going to talk about how we can be sustained because verse 27 Jesus continues now he shifts gears and he says wait a minute now I don't want you looking for me based on what I can do for you I want you looking for me just because you desire me I want you looking for me because I can redeem you of your sin not because I can give you two fish and five loaves of bread not because of the miracles I perform but because of what the miracles I perform indicate that I'm able to do so he says, but I can also sustain you. And the thing that you're looking for me for won't sustain you. If you're not in it for the right reason, you won't be sustained. If you're being satisfied by a few comments, likes, and shares, by a few folks on the audio line tally, if that's what satisfies you in this industry, it's not going to sustain you because there's going to come a time when nobody's going to log on Facebook with you. There's going to come a time when nobody dials in on the audio line tally. That's not going to satisfy you, Tally. And that's certainly not going to sustain you. And so verse 27, God says, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Are you in it for the right reason? I ask again. Because if you're not, you won't have what it takes to be sustained in this race, Jesus says, don't waste your energy striving for perishable food. And so we see now what's going on in the land. Folks are beginning to reach out one to another to begin having conversations on race and to begin having conversations on police brutality. But if we're only doing it to say we're doing it, Jesus says, don't waste your energy striving perishable food like that. That's not going to be enough to keep you interested. That's not going to be enough to keep you caring. Even folks right now, even right now folks are satisfied and it's evident. How do I know it's evident? Because they've left the shore in a ship and they don't have Jesus. And when they're in a ship I come to break news to you that as long as you're in a ship a storm will surely come. And I don't know about you but if I'm going to be in a boat, if I'm going to be in a ship, I'd rather be in a ship with Jesus. Because when the storm comes, all I got to do is wake him up. 
All I got to do is say, Lord, speak to the storm. And he will suddenly speak to that thing. But too many of us are jumping out in the boat and we're getting out in the water and we've abandoned our life jacket. We've jumped out in the water and we ain't got no help. Many are out on the water without Jesus. Your conversation and your cares won't be sustained if you're in it for perishable items. Uh, you're out there to be seen. You're out there to be heard of things that only satisfy your ears. Jesus says that's called working for the food which perishes. And Jesus now is trying to instruct them He's trying to correct them. He's trying to lead them in the way that will help them have what is eternal. Jesus wanted them to labor for the food which will endure for everlasting life. And so he makes a contrast between material things and spiritual things. Yeah, we know. We know it's, it's, it's universally true that people are more attracted to material things uh, than spiritual things. Why? It's because of that, those eyeballs, these two things, for me, four things, that enable us, that allow us to see. And unfortunately, it's a lot of spiritual things that God is placing inside of us that we can't see. However, we can feel. God can feel your faith. And you got to be able to feel his favor in your life. And that way, what these eyes flesh, what these things lust after, these old eyeballs, those things that they desire to see, that make you think that you just got to have, you can suppress those things. But we know that a sign that says free money and a sign that says free food will always get a bigger crowd than one that says, free spiritual fulfillment than one that says free eternal life. Uh, let me bring it a little closer. Because we're a satisfied people, we're looking to things that won't keep us sustained on this journey. We're more likely to share in a public divide than in a peaceful deliverance. I'm going to say that again. Because we are satisfied, we are looking to things that won't keep us sustained. How do I know? It's because we're more likely to share in a public divide than in a peaceful deliverance. Look around you. Look at your Facebook timeline. You see more people sharing the public divide than the peaceful deliverance. We're more likely to share a Facebook post about a community crisis and then share the word of God that promises if we seek the Lord, these things will be added unto us. Are you in it for the right reasons? Are we in it for the right reasons? Jesus recognized that the people who had found him and the people who were following him, they were more impressed at the miracle of bread than they were at the idea of what Jesus was capable of. It is in that that they were satisfied and thought it would be that that would keep them sustained. But Jesus actually wanted them to be more impressed for the spiritual food. Are you in it for the right reason? If you are, then you got to start looking for those things that have been sealed. Let's look at it as we close. Verse 27. Jesus again still speaking. Still instructing. John chapter 6. Now verse 27. He says, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. But watch this. This is the last piece. This is the seal. For on him... God the Father has placed his seal of approval. From him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. In other words, Jesus says, work for the food that's going to stick to you. You know, that old soul food, as we call it. See, many of us kids growing up, our parents, and I can remember Granny even 
She said, we like to eat junk food. But every now and again, Granny would pull out the old-fashioned homemade biscuit and syrup. And she'd even do some salmon balls. And then maybe even later in the day, she'd do some chicken and dumplings. Something that's going to stick to the insides. Maybe some greens and cornbread. Something that's going to stick to the inside. Because she recognized that all day long, as we were on the journey of our childhood, all day long, as we were playing out in the yard, we'd come inside, drink a little soda, and, it's, and it would satisfy our belly. We'd go back outside, play a little bit longer, and then we'd come back inside and maybe eat some candy. And then we'd go back outside, play a little while longer, and then we'd come back inside and get a Rice Krispie treat, maybe even a Pop-Tart, maybe even a Moon Pie and Oatmeal Pie. Then Granny would have that sweet tea ready, and then that would satisfy the belly. But then there would come a point where Granny would look in, and she realized, yeah, that we needed to be sustained. And so she'd give us some food that would endure us. She'd give us some food, yeah, that would sustain us so that we wouldn't have to keep coming inside and outside, so that we wouldn't have to keep the screen door open, letting flies in, letting the AC out. Oh, somebody don't know what I'm talking about. Are you in it for the right reason? I come today to ask somebody, are you in it for the right reason? Jesus said, I'm trying to give you food that will stick with you, food that will nourish you for eternal life. Food that only the Son of Man can provide you. He and what the Son of Man can do is guaranteed. It is sealed. It is stamped by the approval of the Father. Back then, understand why the seal was important because it was common for folks back then to not know how to read. And so when the king, when he would put a decree out in the land, he would have to overlook all the fancy jargon. He would have to overlook all the fancy words. He would have to overlook all the type. And he said, hey, no, these folks can't read. So let me just put a seal on them. Let me just let them know <laughs> that the king approves of this. And Jesus says, I have been stamped by God. Yeah. Jesus has been sealed. The Father has placed his seal on him. His mark of approval has been placed on him. We know what a seal is. It's that mark of ownership and a guarantee of the contents. If you're in it for the right reason, then you'll be looking for something that has a guarantee. Jesus told them, in other words, that they got to have confidence in him. Yeah, that as you're on the journey, you got to have Jesus with you. So many times I get on Facebook and folks are saying, help me somebody, that I don't need peace. I'm ready to be mad. I'm ready to tear stuff up. But I come to inform somebody today that you do need peace. You need the Prince of Peace. Yeah, because he's been sealed. He's been stamped with the approval of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Anybody need Jesus right now? He's been guaranteed. Yeah, stamped and sealed with the mark of approval. Are you in it for the right reason? Because if you're in it for the right reason, I come to tell somebody today, Jesus told the disciples that if you're in it for the right reason, you won't be satisfied because I fed the multitude. You won't be satisfied because you've been able to watch me feed the people. You won't be satisfied just because you've been able to see me heal some folks. You won't be satisfied with just watching my miracles. Yeah. Anybody need more of Jesus today? Not just as a bystander, but one that gets on the inside of you. Yeah. If you're in it for the right reason, you'll know that in order to be sustained on this spiritual journey, that everywhere you go, Jesus has to be on board. If you're in it for the right reason, you'll know that in order to be satisfied, you got to eat of the things that are sealed with, the, with God's step of approval. Anybody know there's no better seal of approval than having accepted 
Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's not just the God that will meet your needs, but he's been marked so that you can be redeemed. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I ain't just talking about two fish and five loaves of bread. I know it was good when he restored your marriage. I know it was good when he paid your light bill. But if you want to be sustained, you need more than earthly and fleshly desires, man. You need to eat of him spiritually so that you can be sustained by the one who is sealed. His seal was marked on his walk to Calvary every time <laughs> yeah, they beat on him. That's the stamp of approval. Every time, yeah, they spit on him. That's him being sealed. Every time, yeah, they tripped him up as he marched up that hill called Calvary. That's that seal. Yeah. And then God said, let me give him my stamp of approval. A hundred percent guaranteed. They placed the crown of thorns on his head. He was sealed. Contents guaranteed. 100% by the owner. Then they pierced him in the side. And now you can be sustained because of the blood. Because he's been sealed, he hung high. He stressed why. He hung his head and then he died. And then they tried to seal the seal. Yeah. They tried to put the seal in the seal. They placed him in the tomb. But three days later, he rose with all power in his hands. The contents were still good. The contents were sealed. The contents were still 100% guaranteed. Are you in it for the right reasons? In order to survive on this ship, you can only be satisfied by the blood of Jesus Christ. In order to come out of this crisis, you can only be sustained by the blood of Jesus Christ. In order to get the victory in the valley, it's going to come through the sealed blood of Jesus Christ. Ain't the Lord all right? Are you in it for the right reasons? Folks begin finding Jesus and following Jesus, even receiving favor from Jesus. And that alone was enough to satisfy them. But Jesus said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <coughs> Jesus said, wait a minute. You found me. You're following me. You've received my favor. But you still have not accepted me on the inside as your new food. So right now, you think you're satisfied. But that earthly desire, the fact that I took you out the pit and put you in the palace. That's not enough. In order for you to be sustained, you got to know that I'm the source of your life. You got to know that I'm the one that's going to redeem your sin. And when you know that, when you accept that, now you're sealed. Now, you got the approval. Come on now, while the blood is running warm in your veins. God bless you. We extend the invitation to you right now. Are you in it for the right reason? Because guess what? Today, you may be on the mountain high. Yes, Lord. But tomorrow, you may be in the valley low. Yes, Lord. And if you hadn't placed Jesus inside of you, we're going to be what we call them fair weather fans, them fair weather Christians. And Jesus recognized, he said, wait a minute, I can't allow you to be in it for the wrong reason. Yes, because you're going to be persecuted on my behalf. And if you're only following me because of what I can do for you versus what I can do through you, we're going to have some problems. Yes, so I extend the invitation to you right now. I know God has been good to you. He's been good to me. But have you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Have you, have you eaten of his eternal food? Yes, Lord. Food that's going to last you forever? Thank you, Jesus. 
Are you in it for the right reason? Yes, Lord. Don't be satisfied. Do not be satisfied. Stay hungry for the Lord. Oh, yeah. Keep eating of his tables. You can have that eternal food so that you can be sustained on this spiritual journey. Yes. And dwell with the one who's already yes, been seen. Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. <coughs> Amen. We thank God for that word. We thank God for the word so that we know that we can be sustained not by things that we think can, can sustain us, but by what God, what Jesus can do to sustain us. We thank you for that word. And we thank you guys for joining with us for our Sunday worship. Um, we will be back again tomorrow at 7 o'clock for a prayer call. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, please let us know. And then, of course, on Wednesday, we have our midweek worship. And then again next Sunday for um, for Sunday worship. We hope you enjoyed. We got a few more seconds. If you want to just comment and let us know something that resonated with you throughout this word, we would like to see that. Um, we just thank God for his word. We thank God for Jesus, who he, who he uh, signed, stamped, and approved for us to, uh, to confide in and someone that can intercede on our behalf and we're just so grateful mm -hmm. for it we're just so grateful to god yes lord uh sister joanne said thank you for that word we thank everybody for hey, joining on with us sister joanne hey brother stanley how you stanley, doing please. uh sister austina mother pratt thank you for joining yaya's on there didn't say hey yaya hi yaya <laughs> um we got michael landry thank you for joining on with us um, Sister April Treadway. My cousin April. Yeah. Thank you for joining on, Sister her. April. Hey, Calvin Pastor. Jackson. Hey, Pastor. Pastor Jackson. Thank you for joining on. Chelsea Brown. Tanisha Swan. Um, thank you for joining on with us hey, as well. We you miss out. you, Alex Free. Uh, we thank you for joining on. With us. Yes, <laughs> uh, we just wanted to give out a few shout Neighbor outs. Neighbor Joe. Coach yeah. Joe. Uh, yes, sir. Say hey, Joe. Say hey, Joe. <laughs> uh, Gal Evans, we just thank you guys. We could not um, do this without you guys. We are just so grateful um, for you. We hope and pray that you receive a word to get you through this week, um, another week that God has blessed us with. We just need to thank God and glorify God for waking us up this morning. Thank I know God. we have so many requests for him, but sometimes we have to take a moment to just simply thank him. Thank him for all of the blessings. Thank him for our children, our family. Thank him for our jobs, um, our homes, our cars, um, keeping us safe throughout this, this quarantine and this COVID season. Sometimes we just have to take a moment to thank God for what he has done for us. And I thank God for everything that he's been do doing for us. I thank him for giving us, you guys giving us the, uh, the, the gift of technology so that we can have an opportunity to worship with you and to touch your lives even through um, social media, websites, and um, the internet. So we are just so grateful. Sister Jasmine and, and uh, Atlanta, we will continue oh, to yeah. pray with you as well. We tell hope all is well. Hello. Yeah. Yes, tell Uncle Reggie hello. And everybody else that has joined in, we are just so grateful. We are feeling lifted up. We can feel the spirit in this place. We hope that you have felt the spirit wherever you are, whether you are in your car, you're at home, you're at work. No matter where you are, we just hope and pray that you felt that spirit. And we just pray that the word has resonated with you, that you can apply it. Now that you know it's time for us to apply, we're in this thing together. And so we don't want you to feel like you're being, um, you're you're the only one going through the things that you're going through. We're in this thing together. So at this time, we're going to pray, and then we just hope that you have a great rest of your Sunday. Amen. Let's pray again. Father God, we come right now in the name of Jesus to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank yes, you for Lord. more grace, more mercy. We thank you for even your patience today, Father God, to where some of us hadn't been in it for the right reason. But, Lord, your word is a timely word. Your yes, word Lord. is always able, Father God, to reach those who need it most, Father God. And we pray right now that you remain patient with yes, those of Lord. us who hadn't been in it for the right reason. We ask, Father God, that you continue to encourage any of us who have been in it for the right reason. Check our motive. Check our heart. Yes. We know you know our heart, Father God, but when you look at our heart, we pray that our heart is pleasing to yes, you, Father God. Lord. We pray, Lord, that we're only satisfied in the things that you give us, Father God, that we know that our that, uh, us being sustained comes from you being our oh, source, yes. Father God, and our source has already been sealed yes. through Jesus Christ, through what took place on Calvary, Thank Father you. God. 
everything, Father God, that we go through, Father God, we need to have Jesus on board. Yes. Let us not get in a ship and leave the shore without our Savior, Father God. Help us right now, Father God. Know, Father God, that Jesus it is not because of what you're doing for us, but it's, it's what you're doing in us and through yes. us of the reason that we continue to follow you. It's the reason that we continue to find you, Father God. Lord, it is in that, Lord, that we will be sustained. Yes. Not on these material things, not on these fleshly and earthly things, Thank but on these you. things that will last us oh, forever. Yes, God. Lord, we're asking prayers for specific ones who are dealing with COVID-19. Yes. Deacon Reginald Lamar Nelson, Sister Austina Pratt, Father yes. God, Baby Drew Pollock, yes. Father God, Lord. and so on, Father God. There are many of those who have recovered, Father God. I saw Reverend uh, Raymond Collins, Father God, back out who has recovered. I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for the victories, Father yes. God. I thank you, Lord, for bringing Sister Austina thank home you, already, Father God. I thank you for the victories, Lord. I know you've done it for them. You'll do it for others, Father God. Continue going with those families. Continue going with our governing officials, yes, Father God, Jesus. local, state, uh, and federal, Father yes, God. Lord. They need you now more than ever. Now yes, is not God. the time where we remove you. Now is the time where we remove ourselves and put more of you in. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father God, for those of us who are angry, for those of us who are frustrated, help us understand what your word says in Romans 12, where you say, leave room for your wrath. Oh, yes, help us God. leave room for your wrath and not be all the way in the way. Yes. But get back out of the way and oh, allow yes, you God. to reign sovereign, yes. Father God. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our sin, iniquity, and transgression. We know you're able to forgive all and heal all. Lord, we ask right now that you bless each individual under the sound of my voice. Continue to bless the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist yes. Church. Continue to bless each other person uh, under the sound of my voice. Pastors, loved ones, families, and friends who have tuned in with us. Continue to bless them according to your will. You, Move Jesus. in their life according thank to your God. purpose and at your pace. Thank you, we Jesus. thank you, Lord. Now as we leave, we never want to leave your presence, but we're asking for continued protection and provision. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, send us our, any prayer requests that you may have so that we can pray over those tomorrow during our prayer call at 7 o'clock. Um, we love you guys, and we're just praying God's blessing over you guys. Enjoy your Sunday. God bless you.